we're in a point of history today where our country and the world are facing a frightening existential crisis which we've never experienced before. We're on the verge of plunging into a new dark age, far worse than that of the 14th century dark age. If this crisis is not solved now, the world's population will plunge within a generation from 6.5 billion that we have now to less than 1 billion people. And the survivors will live in unprecedented misery. The present global system is exploding because it is built upon British free trade globalist models of globalisation in which the City of London, Wall Street and other financial elites loot the actual physical economy for their own profit. Therefore, the debt bubble soars while the real economy collapses. Although we had problems before, beginning in 1983, Hawke and Keating rammed through this free trade globalist model and our actual physical economy has been looted ever since, including by Howard and now by Rudd. Poverty, job losses, home foreclosures and homelessness are all soaring, while our food producers, small businessmen, small businesses and manufacturers disappear by the day as the economy collapses. The intent of free trade and globalisation is to wipe out sovereign nation states so that a private financial oligarchy can rule. Today, Prime Minister Rudd and opposition leader and merchant banker Turnbull are engaged in a virtually criminal bipartisan pact to bail out the private banking system in our country at the expense of our people. Their motto is, Bankers First. They're taking their lead from Britain's Gordon Brown, who is advised by the man who, more than anyone else, created this collapsing global speculative bubble, the former US Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan, and they're being advised by Malcolm Turnbull's former Goldman Sachs business partner on Wall Street, Henry Paulson, today the US Treasury Secretary. Rudd and Turnbull have demonstrated that they intend to commit Australia's national financial resources to prop up the trillions of dollars of financial derivatives held by the private banking system and to let the people of Australia suffer and die. They have refused to take up my party's proposed homeowners and bank protection bill to save the people and put the banks through bankruptcy reorganisation because they are owned by the private bankers. Under their leadership, we face a more mortal threat today, far worse than any time in our 200-year history, including the imminent threat of Japanese invasion during World War II. On December 7th, 1941, Japan attacked the great US naval, naval base at Pearl Harbor and the World War spread with full force into the Pacific. Later that same month, our greatest Prime Minister, John Curtin, who had only been in office for two months, made a command decision that saved our country. Curtin did what no Australian leader had had the courage to do before. He broke decisively with Britain and its Prime Minister, Winston Churchill. Correctly convinced that the British had already conceded Australia to the Japanese, he announced on December 27th, 1941, I make it clear that Australia looks to America, free from any pangs about our traditional links of friendship to Britain. Of course, he was looking to the America of Franklin Delano Roosevelt and General Douglas MacArthur, 
not to those whom FDR called the economic royalists of Wall Street, the ones who had financed Hitler in the 1930s and who have run America for most of the post-war period since. John Curtin's actions, his decision at that crucial time saved our country. This week, I call upon federal parliamentarians to show the same kind of courage which Curtin did to dump Rudd and Malcolm Turnbull and to immediately shift Australia to economic policies in the national interest, including the adoption of the American statesman and economist Lyndon LaRouche's long-standing FDR-modelled proposal for a new Bretton Woods agreement for a financial world financial reorganisation to ensure our survival. Australia needs the ALP to turn to leaders with the national banking protectionist outlook of its great past figures like John Curtin and Ben Chipley and, the coalition, and a coalition leader to emerge with the outlook of the patriotic, pro-industry, pro-agriculture, long-time National Party leader and Federal Minister, Black Jack McEwen. Such patriotic leadership could then work with myself and the CEC, who know precisely what to do, and Australia could join with other great nations like Russia, China, India, France, and many others which are ready to adopt LaRouche's new Bretton Woods. Before their untimely deaths several years ago, myself and the CEC were privileged to work with two of the, two of the true stalwarts of old Labor, Clyde Cameron and Jim Cairns, both of whom had wholeheartedly publicly endorsed LaRouche's proposal for a new Bretton Woods. When they had been federal ministers in the Whitlam government, when that government planned to buy back the farm in order to develop our great country and was therefore sacked by the Crown. They knew what British imperialism was and they knew its local flunkies, what Jim Cairns told us they used to call the hegemony, and they fought it to the end. This year represents the 20th anniversary of the Citizens' Electoral Council. For almost all of those 20 years, we've been proudly associated with Lyndon LaRouche and have issued his and our own warnings and forecasts of the global financial catastrophe we are now living through. Over these past 20 years and even longer, you have been repeatedly lied to by politicians, economists and the media that we in Australia have and will have everlasting eternal prosperity and wealth. The latest round of lies comes from Kevin Rudd that the crisis has been unfolding for the mere 15 months and from Turnbull that the present crisis, oh, it all started with the housing bubble in the United States. They claim that no one saw this crisis coming. But how come my party, the Citizens Electoral Council, forecast it already in the early 1990s and issued this book back in 2001 with the title, What Australia Must Do to survive the Depression. In this book, and with updates since, we precisely outline the solution. The creation of a new Bretton Woods international monetary system based on national banking, fixed exchange rates, tariff protection, and great infrastructure projects as Lyndon LaRouche had long proposed. Already back in 1994, LaRouche's warnings of the essential characteristic of this crisis were well known in Australia. For instance, the CEC and LaRouche were featured in a 20-page supplement in the Australian Financial Review devoted to the subject of financial derivatives. Under the subhead, bad press overseas has been adding to the global push for regulation, the AFR reported, we are 
According to the American polemicist Lyndon H. LaRouche, Jr., facing a derivatives bubble, a threat of enormous magnitude, the bubble grows like a cancer at the expense of its host, at the same time that its appetite is growing, while a means of satisfying its appetite is collapsing. This derivatives bubble is now measured in the quadrillions of dollars, while the entire world's GDP is a mere $50 trillion. LaRouche was right then, 14 years ago, and he is right now. Rudd and Turnbull claim that the Australian banking system is in pretty good shape. But given that, thanks to globalisation and free trade, Australia is intimately tied to the exploding global financial system, how could our banks conceivably be in good shape? Currently, our Australian banks have total assets of $2.3 trillion, some of which are of dubious quality. As opposed to that, they have $13 trillion in derivatives. So they are utterly bankrupt, no matter how much Rudd, Rudd and others loot from the population to try, them, to try to bail them out, or how many television appearances Rudd makes to assure the population. Most of you get the smell he is lying anyway, and that's why he was terrified that a run on the banks might break out at any moment. In a just desperate, fruitless attempt to save themselves, our banks have been grabbing as much money as they can. Since the beginning of this year, they have quadrupled their borrowing from overseas. The Reserve Bank has poured tens of billions into it, and Rudd has given them at least $35 billion of the $64 billion future fund created from the privatisation and sale of Telstra. So enough of the lies. Here's what we have to do. First of all, dump Rudd and Turnbull. Secondly, get the Federal Parliament to enact our Homeowners and Bank Protection Bill. Our financial and monetary problems are actually political problems first and foremost. Money, finance, banking are tools of sovereign governments to provide for the general welfare of the people that they elected, are elected from to govern. Therefore, when a government chooses to act under the right leadership, then the money supply, the financial system and the banks can be, be forced to behave as they should as tools for the people under the regulation of sovereign governments. Not the other way round as they do now, governments acting as a tool for the banks. Under the Homeowners and Bank Protection Bill, firstly the government would put the banks under bankruptcy reorganisation. There would be no bailout of the bank's gambling debts and we would nationalise the banks if we had to. But the government would preserve the banking system so that we have a means to run a fruitful and prosperous economy. Once in bankruptcy reorganisation, we get rid of the illegitimate debt. As far as the derivatives are concerned, we cancel them. They can never be paid, so they just have to be cancelled. The hedge funds will scream, but they're gone now anyway because of the imploding global, global financial bubble. We will then leave the other parts of the bankruptcy bank, banking system to be reorganised. Overall, we will run the banking system in a highly regulated way, very much like Curtin and Chifley did during World War II, where credit was directed to where it was needed for the common good. And by the way, the present crisis, of course, is far greater than what they faced. Thirdly, the government would slap a moratorium on all home and family farm foreclosures. We must keep people in their homes no matter what. Under the current collapse conditions, up to a million people, a million homeowners, are going to be either mortgage stressed or evicted within the next three months. The family or household unit 
represents directly the potential to develop the future prosperity of our, prosperity of our country. Shatter the family unit through homelessness and stress and you will unleash unimaginable social, social chaos. So the principle is, whilst we reorganise the banking system, we keep people in their homes. Homeowners can pay rental rates to their mortgage holders for however long it takes to stabilise the entire economy. This cash flow, created from the rents, would flow to the mortgage holders and will help to recapitalise the banks. But no more foreclosures. Fourthly, we must re-establish a government-owned national bank as prescribed under LaRouche's new Bretton Woods system. In Australia, that means we have to nationalise the Reserve Bank to effectively create a national bank like King O'Malley, like King O'Malley's original um, conception of the Commonwealth Bank. We provide ready to enact legislation for this in what in our in, in, in our what Australia must do to survive the Depression book. The National Bank has to then issue credit at 1% to 2% for massive infrastructure projects such as the 17 great water projects and nuclear power and transport projects elaborated in our February 2002 New Citizen Special Report, The Infrastructure Road to Recovery. Such projects will ensure millions of productive, well-paid jobs for Australians. Finally, despite us being all being under some very dark clouds at present, with pretty frightening events, very frightening events unfolding every day, we are also at a decisive point in history where the crisis gives us a chance to, profound, to profoundly change our future for the better. As for the path which we must tread to get there, I want to leave you with these words from John Curtin, which he wrote as a credo from his own political outlook. Let your highest ideal be what Christ showed most, an infinite pity for the people and a hatred of, of injustice. Enthrone this ideal in your hearts and you will find your voice. Your voice, perhaps your pen, will smite injustice and tyranny. Your truest prayers will be ardent work for others and that trembling cowardly, introspective, gazing into your own soul to find out whether you are the Lord's or whether you are not, will give place to a brave endeavour and a noble and constant self-sacrifice which will consume your being with enthusiasm and make life really worth living. There is no other mass-based political movement in this country besides my party the CEC. No other organisation exists which has either the, the vaguest clue of what must be done to save Australia, or if they did, would have the courage to act ruthlessly for the common good against the City of London, Wall Street financial oligarchy. But I know exactly what has to be done, and I am willing to fight for it at all costs because we must. I'm therefore asking you, my fellow Australians, to join myself and the CEC in this noble endeavour. Your own life, the lives of your children, and the lives of generations of Australians to come will depend on what you now do. Thank you.